Okay, so just doing a follow-up on the striker running FT8. As you see, I've got the radio. I've got uh, this bunch of bits and bobs here that I got from Amazon. Uh, what we have here is a USB uh, TTL serial cable, uh, specifically this guy right here. So if you find this on Amazon, you should get this. About $10, I think. Uh, I've got this 3.5 aux audio cable. Um, it's the nylon brain, the nylon braided audio cable. Um, there should be two in here. Uh, and I'm going to try this sound card. Um, there's a reason I'm going to use two, well, two, really two reasons that I'm going to use uh, uh, a separate sound card. Um, for starters, this computer only really has a sound out. Uh, it doesn't have one a sound like a microphone, in, but it's only got the um, the one connector, which I think has an input, but um, it really it's probably better that you use a separate sound card. Um, but the simple reason is that when you're running the Windows uh, or any uh, operating system that that's on the thing, uh, and in this case I'm going to be using Windows. That's what's installed in this. Uh, Windows is going to make noises, you know, every time a dialog box pumps up or anything that it comes up on the screen is um, is going to make a sound, and you don't want that sound on your uh, on your transmitted audio. Uh, it's just use a separate sound card. It makes life uh, simpler, and of course regular four pin connector. So I'm going to wire all this up. Uh, I guess the total cost for this little endeavor minus radio and computer is, I don't know, this is like maybe less than $30 US, I think, for, for this stuff. Uh, so I'm going to wire this up um, and then uh, show how it's uh, wired and then we're going to give it a try, see if it works. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this um, USB to TTL serial converter cable. Um, so you get a little piece of paper, um, but inside has the information that we need. We need the pinout. So it tells us that pin one is ground and it is a black wire and uh, so on and so forth. But we really only need the RTS line. So we need ground and RTS. So we need pin one and pin six, which will be the ground and the RTS lines, and that's the black and the green cable. So if we look at our connector, you can see that the arrow is on pin one, and that is the black cable, and then of course the uh, pin six is the green cable. So we need the black and the green. We don't need the rest. So we're gonna set, remove the um, pin header, um, cut the rest back, just leave the black and green intact and those are the con the uh, connections that will be made to um, pin um, uh, pin I guess it's what one audio two ground three transfer so pins two and three on the microphone connector so the um, the black wire should go to pin two and the green wire should go to pin three uh, so I will do that and uh, and then we will proceed from there Okay, so I have gone ahead and taken my four pin connector apart, taken the clamp off, taken the the actual uh, plug itself out, and put it over the cable, cut the others back, and I have my red, uh, my, my, sorry, not my red, my green and my black wire uh, ready. Gone ahead and gotten my two audio cables. So we need one of them to just stay as it is. And the other one, we are going to lop one end off of it. We're going to leave one end on, and we're going to just lop the one end off because we're going to stick that through uh, the microphone, uh, the shell of the connector as well, uh, and just throw some heat shrink around the both of them uh, to clamp them both in. So now I'm going to go ahead and do that part. Okay, so I've got this all stripped and tinned. Um, this has some, some rather thin cable, so what we need to do here is uh, find something to something to sort of contrast this wire. So 
The audio lead has three wires, and they're, of course, very thin. Um, doesn't really look like it on the camera, I don't think. Um, the top one's red, the middle one is a copper color, and the bottom one is a sort of bluish green. Now, that's um, the, these three wires correspond to the tip, the ring, and the sleeve, but not in that order. Um, in this case, the red wire is the tip. The bluish green colored wire is actually the ring, and the copper colored wire is the sleeve. So the tip, the ring, and the sleeve on this end, so this is the tip, this is the ring, and this is the sleeve. So this is going to be your audio signal essentially in your ground. We don't really need to uh, can be concerned with the ring. We're dealing with mono signals. Um, so I'm not going to use that. That's actually the red wire. Uh, I'm sorry, that's not the red wire. That is the bluish green wire. So the ones that I want is the copper colored wire and the red wire, at least on this cable. Um, whatever cable you get might be different. Uh, ohm it out. Make sure you know which uh, is going where. Um, if you're just putting your own ends on it, well then, yeah, you can sort of work that out. But basically what we really want is the tip and the sleeve. Um, you can tie the tip and the ring together, probably be fine as well. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use the um, the tip and the sleeve. So um, that one, this is probably the hardest part to work out. Um, you know, questions you can certainly ask. And, uh, but really, if, you, if you're not sure, just ohm it out, and I think you'll be fine. Now that I've got this all connected, um, I've got the audio on two. The ground is on one. I think I might have actually said that backwards before. So um, this will find out if I'm wrong. So it's one ground, two audio, three transmit. So I've got the green wire on pin three. Uh, four has no connection. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So one ground. So the two grounds go there. The black wire and the copper colored wire from the other lead. This is not going to turn out very well, I don't think. But um, the red wire to two, in this case, which is the, uh, the tip and the green wire from our USB cable to uh, the third pin. Uh, so I'm just going to clean this up, put the, uh, you know, shrink the heat shrink down over it all, and uh, put the clamp on and screw in, and then uh, go ahead and connect this uh, to the computer and the sound card and see what happens. Okay, so I've gone ahead and connected this to the radio and to the sound card. So the microphone from the radio is going to go to the headphones or audio output or whatever it is on the sound card, which in this, in this guy, it looks like a little headphone symbol. Um, and the microphone symbol on this, um, it's actually uh, pink on this one. And I think a lot of them are actually color coded. So it would be pink and that's your line in, that's gonna come from your speaker. So you're going to turn the volume down on the radio all the way um, and then turn it up very slowly when you get in the software and um, keep it in the green. Now for the line out or the speaker out, this might be amplified. So make sure you turn the microphone gain on the radio all the way down and the volume uh, on the software all the way down and then work your way up. So. I'm going to flip over to the computer now where I've already got the software running. We'll go through the software part of it, what I've got set up. So we'll just close this real quick then. Let's just go to the device manager. So on this computer, there are no comp ports um, except for the one. So in order to figure out which COM port you have, you know, you can unplug your uh, USB adapter like I've done and then you just see the entire list go away because there are no other COM ports except for the one uh, and plug it in and then just see which one appears. So if you already have a like a COM one on your computer and then you plug in your net your new one in this and you look in this list and then all of a sudden you now have a, a two a three a four a ten or whatever it is that's your new number so you're just gonna look to see what what appears. Um, as for your sound card see this computer 
already has like an HDMI uh, audio output. So if I unplug the little USB sound card on this, you'll see that I'm left with just the digital output, which is all this computer has, um, and the display audio, which is through HDMI. So if I plug in the new card, I end up with this um, USB audio device, just some generic thing. And what you want to make sure um, is if you go over to your Windows, your little speaker, you don't want Windows playing through it. Like, you don't want Windows doing this. Um, so you're going to, like, play through something else. Um, so you don't want Windows playing its sounds through this. So we'll configure that in the... Um, uh, WSJTX software, which this one is still actually the uh, the pre-release um, that I should not have downloaded. Um, of course, I fire it up, um, and I'm going to go over here to settings, call sign, grid. Um, for radio, I've got it set to the COM4, as shown in the device manager, set to RTS. If you hit test PTT, so if you push it, remember as soon as you but think of it, as soon as you push it, it's going to start transmitting. So you push it, you see the radio transmit, push it again, you see the radio receiving. Uh, so you know that the RTS is toggling properly, the radio goes and transmit. Uh, audio, the input is the microphone from this USB audio device, and the output again is see that you want to make sure you pick the right one, which is, again, from this USB audio device. Um, set those to mono. Um, and that's pretty much all you need to do. Bring this all the way down to, like, the first notch. You want to start as low, you know, with really uh, low audio into the radio. Um, this being here uh, is your um, audio from the radio. So it says here, 30 dB recommended only when noise is present. Green when good. Red when clipping may occur. Yellow is when it's too low. So it's green. You can bring it up a little bit. See the, But it's touchy. It's too high. So that's probably okay. And that's just the volume on the radio just sort of barely cracked. Um, it's just, uh, you know, you're running from a uh, an amplified output. So it's going to be just a little bit uh, touchy. So for transmit, um, I've got the microphone audio on the radio. The microphone gain is at halfway. You do not want to run that, you know, everything wide open. Halfway is probably good. Um, set this down to the first bar and uh, go ahead and um, you can, you know, probably use tune. But I'm just going to go ahead and give this a shot and see what happens um, and just so yeah the radio is probably doing about 10 or 15 watts that's probably fine um, it just briefly uh, transmitted because it wasn't uh, our time so this will be a next slot and we'll get a better idea if it is transmitting with uh, enough power yeah that's perfectly fine that's about right. Um, if you can see it sort of twitching a little bit as it generates the tones, it's it's good enough. Um, we don't want to have a whole lot of power. 10 or 15 watts is probably about as much as you want to do. And that's about what this radio is putting out. So uh, I think that's a success. So I'll throw out the few CQs here, see if anybody comes back, which band's pretty much closed. Um, I, I really doubt it. I've been surprised before, but uh, I, I, I really doubt um, that uh, that anybody hears this. There's just nobody, uh, nobody out there right now. Um, it's uh, only uh, nine thirty in the morning, so we got to give things a little bit more time. Just let it go one more time and see what happens. Check PSK Reporter and see if anybody heard it. Um, I don't think that there are any many monitors running right now, so. Probably not. So just go ahead and not transmit the next sequence when this is done, and that'll be it. 
and look at PSK Reporter. I'll sign a TA 15 minutes to her two days ago. So when I was using this computer uh, two days ago, still two days ago, I haven't been running my monitor. So um, sent by, well, I haven't been actually uh, doing FTM in 10 meters. Um, so um, not receiving anybody. So there's no nothing to report. Um, nobody has heard uh, any of the CQs in the last 15 minutes. Yeah, so there's there's usually somebody monitoring nearby um, if they haven't reported, um, if they're not running their monitor, uh, which it doesn't look like it. So let's um, just go ahead and get rid of this. Um, anyone? Yeah, I don't think anybody around me is running a monitor. So... Um, but then again, the band is closed, so there's probably just nobody to be heard. Um, there's usually two other people in, within a 50-mile uh, radius of me that are running monitors, um, and they usually show up. So I have a feeling that both of them are somebody that's usually up over here. I think that's like, uh, what do they call it, Elgin or something. Yeah, up here, uh, closer to here, Camden, actually, that runs a monitor. Um, yeah, to it, there's just nobody running any monitors in the area that's going to pick it up. So, um, I usually don't make it to Charlotte on FT8. Um, I actually occasionally will be heard up here in Kentucky somewhere, uh, in, in Tennessee. Usually there's somebody that will that that will hear me uh if there's if they're running their monitor um i'm not too sure why i can't usually get to charlotte but i can get further up this way it's just the way things are uh for me and that's usually fairly regularly that i can hit this person that's somewhere up here this is a station up here i just don't remember the call sign top of my head so that's pretty much it um if um if there were better conditions somebody probably would have picked this up but um not today so i hope this uh helps people uh get their little uh ft8 uh striker going um very inexpensively and easily so uh, cheers guys till next time